This right here, my friends, is one of the tricks that started it all. People knew it as the Fruit Loops card trick. Little did they know that this was actually the ambitious card with a nice bit of heroin disguising it. This was one of the more popular tricks to come out of the Street Magic special by David Blaine, and it's one that really entranced the magic population of virginities because they too wanted to get the same reactions that David did while performing this trick. I get to write my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna go like this. I'm just gonna go like that. Or I'll tell you what, just, can you snap? You know how to do it? Yeah, okay, every time you snap, your card's gonna jump from the middle of the deck right up to the top. So which card do you want? You know, for years I thought that these kids were just alternative emos. Little did I know as I grew up, no, they're just heroin heads. Look at what he does when David Blaine tells him that every time he snaps, the card's gonna come to the middle. He just mindlessly starts snapping until, well, David Blaine snaps him out of it and says, well, which card do you want? A lot of the comments are wondering as to Fruit Loop's future and what he's been up to all these years. He's dead. He's dead along with the rest of his Motley crew. Well, I don't know that for sure, but I'm just assuming based on his looks that this guy lived in an efficiency in New York with about seven of his most heroin friends all smacked up, constantly looking over a Hello Kitty coffee maker waiting for their single cup of coffee to be made while telling their girlfriend that they love their new sunglasses. Let me know if you get that reference. It's a deep cut. <laughs> The nine of diamonds? Yeah. Put it face up here so you can write big. Write your name big on the card. Yeah. Cool. Fruit Loops. Now this is your name. I mean, this, I couldn't I couldn't possibly replicate that. Fruit Loops, <laughs> that's your name? That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, look, hold it? No, no, look. In the middle, right? Is about middle? middle? Well, I mean, I'm estimating, but let's give or take a few. That's about middle. Would we agree on that? About? I guess so, yeah. Look. Here it comes, ready? Snap your fingers right over. Done. See? Wow, he's Stop good, again, right? right? Now, David Blaine uses a wonderful subtlety here with that depth illusion, that tilt move by Marlo or Di Vernon, depending on what school of virginity you decide to subscribe to. You should subscribe to the Pig Cake Magic Academy, the home of over 1,500 videos going over card stuff, coin stuff, everything you need to become the best magician you could possibly be. And you learn moves like this, and I'm always uploading new videos, so it's not just 1,500 videos. It's way more than that because I'm always uploading new content, more content than you could ever consume. Check it out, and you'll learn the tilt, or you'll learn the depth delusion. Now, in this case, David Blaine decides to pair it with a push-off double lift, which is just a banger of a move. It's a very difficult one to pull consistently, and yet, throughout the years, you've seen David Blaine just nail this move in all sorts of conditions. Now, you might look at this and scoff. However, this was revolutionary at the time because the camera is not focused on David Blaine. The camera's focused on the reactions of the participants. And this is something that you didn't see during this time. You just saw a lot of focus on the magician and the trick, whereas this, the focus was on the reactions, and that's what made David Blaine essentially a millionaire. The one downside is that David Blaine did create a generation of magicians that decided to make people snap to make the magic happen. And in this case, everyone's done that and you should be ashamed. Good, right? Watch, watch, good, watch, watch again, look here. His okay. card, your card, look, pick up about half of the deck. Go ahead, fruit loops, pick up about half. Your card goes in the middle, the rest go on top. Done. <laughs> no, wait, yeah, wait a minute, hold on. Let me put that card in the deck. Oh, watch again, I'll leave it, watch. That is one of my favorite things to do with the ambitious card routine where you have the participant cut off a small portion of the cards or half the deck and then they place the card in the middle or you place it and then it goes to the top. Now here you could see that Fruit Loops prematurely exposes the top card and it still gets a reaction just because of how the fuck could that card have gone from the middle so cleanly directly to the top. Also notice the length of this ambitious card routine is only three phases. So David Blaine only establishes the trick with the first phase. He reinforces the trick with the second phase and you're going to see how he builds it up with the third phase. Look, 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 here's his card with his name, I promise, look, now look, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm assuming, look, here's his card, I'm assuming that this is about middle, but this time, so you know what's going on, I'm going to leave it sticking out so you can see his name, I mean, I couldn't cheat and duplicate that, that's his name, here it goes, this is, I'm counting now, this is about 12 cards down plus another 10, so 22, here it comes, no, no, snap, snap right over. That's the move, see? Oh. Nah, you're a bad man. He's good, right? He's a bad man. He did it. Oh, come here.
Now, I said three phases, but technically this is just to set up the ending of the routine, which is the pop-up move, which I think is one of the most powerful and simple ways you could end an ambitious card routine. And it could even lead into folding the card easier for maybe a revelation inside of a wallet or inside of a pocket or maybe perhaps inside of a paperclip, like with Jay Sankey's paperclip effect. And his audience management is great because this would be a tough crowd. In this case, you could see that they're turning cards over prematurely. They're touching the cards when they shouldn't. And yet David Blaine still managed manages it perfectly and still nails his double lift despite them wanting to touch the cards and check it for themselves if that's truly the top card of the deck. Come here though, stay here. I want you to see one more time. That's amazing. One more time, stay here. Look, look, look. Let's bend his card, right? Like this. It's bent. Now you can see the card. I mean, there's a pretty major bend in it. Look, the cards go right on top of it. Ready? Watch this. Fruit Loops. Oh, you sang of this. And you see the ending again with the payoff for that pop-up move, which is the simplest thing to do. And yet they see the moment that card comes from the middle to the top, supposedly, without much effort on your end. So a lot of times you see magicians, they really try their best to keep the performance and go overboard with phases. Simplicity is key. Less is more. And in this case, you see that it's only three phases. Now, yes, he does add that other establishing phase in order to get the card to the position where he needs to for the pop-up move, but it's still a phase where he introduces the effect reinforces the effect and then concludes the effect with a very powerful moment where you see the bend physically go from the middle to the top of the deck and honestly bending the card is a great way to end a trick it really reminds me of when my uncle bends me over in the game room closet I see you again when 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 I see you again Oh, <laughs> shit.